Hey, Seth David here from the world-famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated. And in this edition of Nerd's Guide to the Galaxy, we're going to talk about a situation that comes up not too often, but often enough that I felt it was worth addressing. It's come up for me actually a couple of times this year with different clients, which is as follows. We, and, and this has probably happened to all of us at some point. Uh, you know, in my client's example, they, you know, they have the kind of business where they periodically will do like an outdoor event. And during that event, they're collecting money, you know, a lot of cash, of course. And they probably have, you know, the swiping tools, you know, on their iPads and whatever to collect credit card payments even. But the bottom line is they took in a bunch of money for this event. And they, you know, they forgot to tell us about it as the accountants. And then, like, three months later or more, they say, oh, you know, we're cleaning up the uncategorized income, you know, the money that came in that they couldn't tell us what it was for exactly originally. And they realized these were the sales from that outdoor event they did. They were taxable and they should have been included and the sales tax paid on that stuff in that quarter, let's say the first quarter, and now we're in the second. So now we have to figure out how to capture that so we can get the sales taxes paid and hopefully stay under the radar of the Board of Equalization or State Revenue Department, whatever it might be, um, and knowing that ultimately we did get the sales taxes paid in. So how do we address this? Because I've got a deposit that happened in the quarter where we didn't record the sales or the related sales taxes, but the money's there uh, back in, let's say, March of this year. What do I do? How do I resolve this so that I can pick it up, get the taxes paid, and pray that we don't get audited? Because if we do, they're still not going to like it. They're going to say it was paid late, and we'll probably get hit with some penalties on that. Let's take a look at my screen, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, So how to record income and sales tax from a prior period in QuickBooks Online is what we're talking about. So first, let's go take a look at my profit and loss. And when I run it, I'm going to see, and of course, this is a sample, so it's very clean, makes it easier to see what's going on. So we have 10000 in uncategorized income, and if I drill in, you can see this is from March 19th of this year. Well, now here, as of this recording, it's August of 2022. Many months later, sales tax uh, return was filed for the first quarter, taxes paid, so we can't go back and change that. Um, so what do we do? The first thing we're going to do is go into this deposit and change it from uncategorized income to unearned revenue. Unearned revenue is an other current liability account. So we're moving the money off the P&L, and as long as it's within the same year, this shouldn't be an issue. We're going to move it over to a liability account. We're going to call it unearned revenue. We're going to just treat it as though we got paid in advance and didn't earn it yet. The truth is, you know, this is our way of deferring it in effect so that we can pick up the income and properly record the sales taxes and everything else. Uh, you know, when the time comes, right? So if you don't have unearned revenue, you're going to set that up as an other current liability, and we'll hit save and close. And of course, now you're going to see that's gone from the PL, and now we're playing on the balance sheet. Okay, now the next thing we need to do. Because a lot of times when you get something like this, especially when you see such an even number, you know, a lot of times the client will say, well, we didn't really track the sales tax and charge it, right? Well, then we got to back into it, right? So backing into it, let's we're going to use the example of where the sales tax rate is 9.75%. Uh, some people might be tempted to just take 10,000 times 9.75% and like accrue that as sales tax, but that's wrong. That would assume that 10,000 was the base amount of the sales and we were charging sales tax on top of that. But 10,000 was all in total what we collected, which means it effectively includes the sales tax. So we need to do a little bit of algebra to back into the net sales number before sales tax so we can figure the sales tax and then they have to add back to $10,000. I have good news for you. You don't have to remember algebra from ninth grade. I did the work for you in this little template I've got here, which you'll see linked up. If you're watching this video, just click the link over to uh, get this on my website and you'll have access to the template. Yours will be a view only version. So just click file and make a copy and you'll have your own editable version. Here you put in the gross sales amount that includes sales tax. Here you put in the rate. This just figures the divisor. You basically just add one to that. And then this uses this number, you know, uh, to against that one to come up to do the math, right? It divides it out. And as you can see, it works perfectly. Then we just take to, to do it right. I take this number times the sales tax rate to arrive at this. 
And of course, they have to add back to 10,000. I want to make sure of that. So that's just kind of it's it's you know when you when you did geometry and you would have a theorem, you'd have to prove do a proof of the theorem, meaning you kind of add it forwards and backwards just to make sure that the math is right. Okay, and that's what makes this bulletproof. So this template will work. It'll work every time as long as you have the right sales tax rate that you're using in here. Now, if somehow your situation is one where there's multiple sales tax rates because you have sales in different jurisdictions, then you'll have to do this or make a copy of it for each separate one. You can probably just copy this into different columns and label them so you know which jurisdiction you're looking at for which rate. All right, so that's going to make things infinitely more complicated. I'm not going to cover that here. Um, but you'll get the gist of it, and you'll have what you need in order to figure out the rest. Right? So you've got this. It's in Google Sheets. Now let's go record the sales receipt that we need to record. Okay, so we're going to go back here. I'm going to say new. We're going to create a sales receipt. And for things like this, I use a generic customer. In this case, I'll just call it outdoor sales event. Normally, I would use the actual name of the event. And let's say we're doing this today. Okay. Uh, we're not going to do an email on this because we're not actually sending it to anyone. Right. I just need to pick up the, uh, the sales so I can get the sales taxes figured in. Right. So this is going to be that stuff we sold. Okay. And we're going to put the amount in here based on what my template said, which was 91.11.62. 9111.62. It's marked taxable. Now, for the purpose of illustration uh, in this example, I've got a custom sales tax rate I did that's based on 9.75%. And of course, when I choose that, it calculates my sales tax amount perfectly, 888.38. And that, of course, adds back to my $10,000, which makes me very happy because that means I have this now bulletproof. Okay, and if I run this, then I'm going to be able to see that I have 888.38 in, and I set up that custom sales tax rate based on the New Jersey Division of Taxation um, as the jurisdiction I use with it, right? The, one of my clients that this came up with is actually in New Jersey, so that's what made me think of it. Um, so the main thing is that sales tax rate has to be correct, right? You might have to do some research to get the right rate. If you're in an area like I am in Los Angeles, you might have to get a blended rate because we have many districts. So even though you might have had the sale all happen in one physical location, uh, if you're in a particular district, then there's a sort of blended rate that you pay. Um, you know, which might add up to 9.75%, especially in these parts, right? So a couple of important things to note. Let's go, and, and we still have one more thing to do, by the way, because now I have 10,000 in sales clearing. Let me go back over the sales receipt and show you, because remember, we moved that 10,000 to unearned revenue, and now we have this 10,000. I didn't point this out, but we deposited this into sales clearing. Sales clearing is set up as a bank account. I use clearing accounts a lot for these kinds of things because they really come in handy. Okay, so first of all, that's where the, the, the 10,000 total is getting deposited. We're going to show you how to clear that out next. Perfect. So let's run the profit and loss. And I just like to do this, first of all, to verify that things worked out the way I expected to. So there's our net sales number that we calculated. And I was using an item on the sales receipt that's linked to this income account, right? So that's how that gets driven right over here to the income statement, right? We're depositing it into sales clearing. I did the custom rate. Everything balances perfectly, okay? Now let's look at how to clear out the sales clearing against the unearned revenue. Because you'll see on the balance sheet, they match exactly. Here's the sales clearing. It's an asset. It's in the bank account. Here's the unearned revenue. Same exact amount and a liability. They're going to clear out beautifully. One of the beauties of using a bank account for a clearing account as opposed to just an other current asset is now I can just write a check. Right? I'll create an expense. And we're paying it out of sales clearing. Okay. I don't really need a payee for this. The date should be the same date that everything else happened on. Okay, and then the category here is going to be unearned revenue and the amount 10,000. And of course, I'd write a nice detailed description on all these transactions. I'm not doing that for your sake because I don't want to make what should be a 15 minute video into a 30 minute one. But especially with something like this, where you, you, it's likely you're going to have to be accountable to explain to somebody what you did. Right, so now these zero out. 100% perfectly. I'm left with my proper sales tax payable and the liability account. Um, nothing affected my bank account. 
right? Because the money had already been taken in and got booked to unearned revenue. So that didn't change at all with any of the stuff we recorded today. And that, my friends, is basically it. Like I said, everything balances out perfectly. The clearing accounts are huge. That saves the day, makes it really easy to kind of trace through this. And here's the bottom line at the end of the day on this. Um, to really kind of make it bulletproof, to, to, to seal it off as 100% bulletproof, here's what you're going to want to have as documentation. First of all, you're going to want to have the receipts from the event that will total up to the total $10,000 that you say you collected, right? So we need receipts, to, you know, that customers have signed or whatever um, for all the credit card payments, cash payments, whatever it was. It all needs to add up to the number that we're reporting, right? So we need those documents. Um, we also need uh, a copy of the template that you used, my Google Sheets template. You're going to want to save that somewhere as backup for how you backed into the net sales number and calculated the sales tax, right? You're going to have to prove to somebody that that number makes sense. And, uh, and then finally, the reconciliation of the funds collected against the sales recorded, right? You know, well, well, I should say with what was deposited into your bank account. So in this example, it was very simple. I had a deposit for 10,000. We said that's what we received. That was the total. In the real world, you're going to have probably a bunch of different deposits, especially if you did take credit cards and cash. That, so you're going to have several deposits that have to add up to the 10000 that you're saying is in the bank account. You're going to need to be able to show here are these three or four different deposits. They all add up to 10000 Here are all the sales receipts. They all add up to 10000 And so your documentation behind the accounting that you've done is absolutely bulletproof when you do it that way. Stick it in a Google Drive folder. Call it Outdoor Event Sales March 2022, something like that, so that if hopefully you don't get audited, but if you do, you're 100% prepared and you can prove every number, which is what makes this all bulletproof. Of course, if you have any questions, just post your comments below wherever you happen to be watching this, and I'll be happy to get back to you with answers to those questions. And as always, if you like what you see here uh, and you're on YouTube, subscribe and click that little bell so you'll get reminded every time I upload another one of these new fantastic videos.